Hey gang, it is Monday, February 19th, 2018, and I want to bring you this week's edition of Monday Morning Leftovers. It's actually Monday Afternoon. So Monday Afternoon Leftovers, it's everything we could have, should have, uh, and would have said on Sunday morning during our teaching time, but for whatever reason we didn't get to. This week, there's no way I can pack this all into one session, so I'm going to share a few leftovers with you today, and I'm going to save the rest for a main course on Sunday, March 11th. I want to give you two tests that we all have to pass in order to find where we're at in determining our contentment. Two tests life will always give you that determine how much contentment you live with. One of them is called the gain-loss test and the other one is the treasure test. So first, the gain and loss test. In the New Testament, in the book of James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 19, James tells us that life is filled with tests. Uh, a test is an opportunity to determine what's in your heart. Uh, if you're taking a, an algebra class or if you're uh, in a biology class in college and your professor prepares and administers a test, that professor or that teacher, what they're trying to do is see what's in the contents of your heart. They're seeing, have you put in the time to study and gain the information and are you able to, to pull it back out in those moments? And that's what tests are. Tests in life come to all of us and they show what's in our heart and one of the tests James says we're going to run into is the gain and loss test. We see it written about in the first chapter. In other words, everything that life adds to you or everything life takes from you is a test. Every gain and every loss is a test. Every adversity and every prosperity is a test that can either make you wiser and propel you on a path towards life or every test is a terrible danger that if you mishandle it, um, it can lead you to sin and it can lead you to death. And James gives us a couple of examples. If you gain wealth or if you lose wealth, it's a test. If you uh, gain love or if you lose love, if you gain friendships or lose friendships, if you gain um, status in your employment or you lose status in your employment, all of those things are, are tests. They're either going to make you a better person, a better Christian, or they're going to make you a worse person or a worse Christian. But here's the thing. Tests never leave you the same. They won't leave you unchanged. So, for example, what happens, what happens if you strike it rich? Like, what happens if um, you really hit it big? One of two things is going to happen because wealth is a test. One of two things is going to happen if you strike you rich. It can either make you humble uh, to the point where you could say, well, well, Lord, why me? I see all these other people out there and they're hustling just like I am and they're working harder than I am and they might have more education than I am, but they've not made it. And here... You've blessed me with a promotion. You've pressed me, uh, blessed me with wealth or with, with riches, with more income. Uh, wow, why me? How can, I use, how can I use what you've done in my life to advance your kingdom? Uh, you might be able to say, listen, God, I recognize that uh, a lot of my other brothers and sisters in Christ who, are, who haven't been blessed like I have financially, for them to give 10% back to the church means that they're going to pretty much break even every month. They're, you know, they're, they're just making it. But for me, for where I'm at, uh, I could go well beyond 10%. I could give 20% or 30%, and I could still live comfortably. Maybe not as comfortably as I could if I, if I kept everything, but because of what you've done in my life, I can give even more away and still live comfortably. Why did you choose me? You see, wealth can be a test. It shows what's in our heart. On the one hand, it can make us more humble, or it can make us more arrogant. We could sit back and say, yeah, I, I deserve this. I earned it. I'm a little smarter. I hustle a little more. I'm a little savvier. I'm a little bit better than the next guy. And that way it makes it harder for us to live with a sense of contentment. In fact, one, of the, one study I read recently says this. In Amer among Americans, of those who make $25,000 a year or less, they give, on average, 4% of their annual income to charity. However, among Americans who make $100,000 per year or more, they give less than 1% of their income to charity. Why? Well, probably because they're deriving a deep sense of contentment 
from financial gain. And they might also be thinking that at that point in life, my luxuries are my necessities. And that's not really the case. I mean, the truth of the matter is wealth can make you humble or it can make you more arrogant. It's a test. Anytime life gives you something or takes something away from you, it's going to show what's in your heart. Anytime life makes you a promise or threatens to remove something, it's going to expose the things that are in your heart. And if you're looking at either the gain or the loss as your main source of fulfillment, your main source of contentment, you're going to fail those tests every time. But if you use those opportunities to make you more humble, more wise, closer to Christ, you'll discover the secret that Paul did. Paul said, I've learned the secret to being content, whether I have a lot or I have a little. Whether my stomach is full or whether it's empty, I can be content because I've learned to put my hope in Christ. So what about you for the gain-loss test? When God brings something in your life that you want or God removes something from your life that you didn't want, does it make you more humble? Does it propel you towards life? Or does it make you more arrogant, more prideful? When God gives you something you didn't want or he takes something from you that you loved, does it make you wiser, more humble, more thankful? Does it draw you close to Christ in those moments? Or do you become more bitter, more cynical? Uh, do you pity yourself? Life is filled with tests. And the gain and loss test will determine where you're at when it comes to finding your true contentment in Christ. The second test, uh, beyond the gain and loss test, we have the treasure chest. Or the treasure chest. Now, the, the treasure chest is something in your dentist's office that you go to after you have a good appointment. You get to pick a toy out. The treasure test is, is uh, actually what I was talking about. Let me read to you from Matthew chapter 6. This is where Jesus talks to us about the treasure test of contentment. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, he says, Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths can eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves can break in and steal them. Instead, store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and where thieves can't break in and steal because wherever your treasure is, there the desire of your hearts will also be. We talked about this a lot on Sunday, but the reality is... Um, we use this word treasure probably way too casually. When Jesus says, when he's talking about the things we treasure, what he's saying is this, to treasure something is to, uh, to behold something, to elevate something. When you treasure something, you look at it and you say, this treasure is, it, it's everything. This is it, it is everything. And if I have this treasure, then I am everything. On the flip side, those things in your life that you treasure in your heart, you also say this, that treasure is everything. And if I don't have it, I'm less than everything. And until I have it, I won't be everything. I won't be complete. And Jesus issues us a warning here. He says, you need to be very aware of the things that you treasure. Because he says, here's the, here's the reality. Everything on earth that you could possibly treasure has something in common. Whether it's the perfect marriage, being filled with love, having uh, enormous wealth or enormous status, or being in a, an environment surrounded by complete beauty or being the ideal picture of health or having a fully, uh, a fully furnished wardrobe with all the clothes and shoes you could ever wish or driving that right car or having an unlimited hobby budget, whatever that looks like for you. Every treasure this world could offer you, if you behold it and say it is everything, the thing in common among all earthly treasures is every single one of them can perish. Every single one of earth's possible treasures can sour. It can spoil. It can die. It can be buried. You can be separated from it. It can decay. It can rust. It can go out of fashion. It can be stolen. It can be squandered away. Uh, even the best of things, they deliver us a certain measure of contentment to be sure. But Jesus is warning us not to chase after treasure. Don't treasure things that are ultimately going to spoil. What he says is you're going to find out that there is a desire in you for an imperishable treasure. And he says that's why we should store up our treasures in heaven. Collect things in heaven that are uh, unsusceptible to being stolen 
or to being separated from you or to decaying. And what you'll find out and what Jesus is driving at is that the only treasure you can have that you can never lose is Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying. What are the things that you treasure? Truth be told, you might treasure a lot of things that you should love, that you should value, that you should prioritize and honor. The problem might not be in what you're treasuring, but in the order in which you're treasuring it. What Paul discovered, what we talked about on Sunday, what Jesus is talking about here is this. In order for you to find true, lasting, fulfilling, uh, undecaying contentment is to feed on Jesus Christ to have relationship with him, to treasure Christ because he will fill you up with a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment and contentment and identity and hope that the world can't corrupt. And if you have Christ, guess what? Then you're free to enjoy wealth or poverty or in the middle. You're free to enjoy lots of relationships or just a few To have marriage or to be unmarried. To have wealth or poverty or live a middle class life. To have a new car, an old car, a used car. Because here's the reality. If life adds it to you, it doesn't change you. And if it removes it from you, it doesn't wipe you out. So that's uh, one of the leftovers I want to leave with you this morning. The two tests that help you and I determine where we're at in this journey of finding contentment. You and I really are craving a type of contentment that the world doesn't offer. And it means that either it doesn't exist or that you and I were made for another world. And I'm arguing that you and I were made for another world to find complete contentment in Christ. And that once we found contentment in Christ, that you and I are free to enjoy all of the things in the world that Christ has to offer for us without it being either a false idol to us or something that completely derails us if it escapes us. So those are my few thoughts for you on this Monday. The rest of what I didn't get to on Sunday, I'm going to make the main course in our uh, teaching session on Sunday morning, March the 11th. So love you guys. Praying for you this week. We'll see you on Sunday, 10 a.m. at Perry Hall High School. God bless you.